Hi, it's Steffi from Steffi's Beads and Baubles, and I wanted to talk to you about bows. A lot of projects I do, I need bows, and you can buy them pre-made in little bags. Now, this is a vintage one, but I'm assuming if you get a, use a coupon, they're probably about a dollar for ten. But if you buy the spool, if you can find some new spools for about a buck, or whatever you buy them for, ten yards is the what these traditionally are is 10 yards of ribbon and if you each bow takes approximately seven inches and if you divide that into 10 yards you get about 51 bows so even if you pay two dollars for this you're getting 51 bows or if you pay a dollar for this you're getting 10 so it's definitely more economical to make them this way and I want to show you the way I do it that saved me money because at first I used to do it one way uh, and I found it was much more economical to do it this way so let me show you what I do I'm going to try black and see if that shows up really well so you, you everyone knows how to tie a bow you just like when you learn to, to tie your shoe in kindergarten you take the two loops and then you cross them over and you push it through the hole there and you pull it and then you're just going to adjust it to get it the way you want and then once you have it the way you want, you can cut it off. That is the best way to do it. I used to measure out the amount of ribbon it would take to make a bow. And then I would tie my bows. Well, sometimes you don't you can save money by doing it this way because let me show you how long this piece of ribbon is. Now this one's a small bow and it only took five and a half. But my traditional ribbons usually take about seven. So if you do it the way I just showed you, instead of just taking the ribbon, and I have still got pre-cut ribbon somewhere, and then it's a lot harder because then you're trying to work with the little piece of ribbon you've cut out. And it's just a lot harder. So if you do it, make the, make the bow like this. You make the bow and then you can adjust the size if you want it bigger or smaller it kind of goes by the tail you leave hold on it goes by the tail you leave on this end so if you're thinking you want a bigger bow leave a little bit bigger tail on the other end then you're going to tuck it through that's the hardest part is sometimes seeing that ribbon to pull through see it's easier to do when it's right under your face, but I'm trying to do it under the camera. But uh, I don't edit. I just show you how I do it. Okay. And you got to remember, I haven't done these in like years now. Okay, so once you get that, you get that little loop and you pull it. Okay. Now see, that looks terrible. So you're just going to pull the ribbon and get it the size you want. Now, it doesn't matter if this ends up being too long. You can trim it. But once you've made a few of them, you kind of get the rhythm, and you can get it to where they're coming out the way you like. Then you can just kind of match up the tails, and that, again, will come with, with experience. You'll know kind of where to cut it. And if you're wondering if this works with other size ribbons, I did some other sizes to show you. This was a wider ribbon this is this stuff that I get at Hobby Lobby and I wait till it goes on clearance and they normally run a dollar but I got a whole bunch of them for a quarter each on clearance when they were 75 percent off but this is that really sheer and that's a real popular ribbon and so that's how it's a bigger ribbon now if it was half this width it'd be a smaller ribbon but I also took a, a half uh, whatever I you know what this ribbon is, and this is another tip for you. Go to Walmart after Christmas, and they sell multi-packs of ribbon. Now, I don't know if they will this year, but a couple years ago, they had packs that were like, I think they had like 8 or 10 different ribbons, and I got them for 69 cents a pack. And this was, I mean, there's a decent amount of ribbon on there. And so I paid hardly anything for these. Well, that's a beautiful gold, and this is a stiffer ribbon. Now this is a little bit smaller, and that comes out like that. And here is a purple satin. Now I will be honest with you, I prefer working with the satin. I think the satin ribbon really comes out nice, although I have to say,
the stiffer metallic really came out well as well as well. <laughs> this uh, it looks okay. It doesn't look bad, but it's such a thin ribbon that you don't get a really nice knot. But it still looks good, and you can actually embellish this because another thing you can buy are these. Um, and boy, I find these all the time at estate sales and yard sales and thrift stores. These little embellishments, and you could take one of those and glue it on top of the bow, and that would be really pretty. And they have the ones that are on the on the stems, like this, or you can just buy the packages that have the different colors. And again, I get these at estate sales, thrift stores, and uh, yard sales for 25 to 50 cents a bag. And I've got a whole big bag of them. And um, I never turn those down when I see them. I don't use them often, but same with the bows. If I can get the bows, now this is that mauve that you can't really buy as easily today. And this, these are all very vintagey colors. The pink I use today is... I do a pink bow for you. Let's see. The pink I did today. Oh, that the pink I would do today is this light pink. This is more of a mauve. But these are plentiful. People bought these and never used them in their crafting. And you can score by picking them up. And now on the bigger ones, you get uh, how many in that bag? Does it say? Oh, it's under the price under the price sticker. Let's see. You get six. That looks like more than six, doesn't it? It says six. Yeah. Yeah. So you get six for the dollar ninety-nine they were getting. And ten for ninety-nine. These were Michaels, obviously vintage. Or not vintage, but at least quite a few years ago. Um, and they were marked down to sixty-nine cents. Wangs International, Memphis, Tennessee. I don't know how old these are, but this doesn't look like modern packaging. Maybe the 80s is what I would guess based on the the design because that was a real popular type of thing in the 80s. And then these are a bunch I made that I just sat down and made while watching TV, talking on the phone, and I made yellow. Now that some of these aren't divided up, but I just made all these different little bows. And that's what I recommend you do is you pick your a pick of color, a spool of ribbon. And just sit and and tie it, cut it, tie it, cut it, tie it, cut it. And just do that to have, you know, as many. You don't have to do a whole spool. But let's say you're going to do 20 things that need a black ribbon bow. Sit and tie it and cut those, those 20 black ribbon bows. If you think you're going to be doing a lot in Christmas, then get out your Christmas green and red. And sometimes I'll do them in a the little bit wider. Uh, I think this is a ribbon that's familiar to many of you. Uh, very popular uh, 20 years ago. But you can still find it today. And I did a bunch of these as well. And I've used a lot of my bows. And like I said, I still have a lot of the pre-cut ribbon because I thought that's what I needed to do. So make the first one, stretch it out, cut it, and that would make it easier. But it didn't. I was shocked when I realized if I just make a bow and cut it off, make a bow and cut it off, it goes faster and I have less issues tying the bows because you can make it bigger and then pull it in much easier. But I just wanted to show you that, you know, there's a lot you can do with ribbon and you can embellish it. You can even like this, if you have those little craft pearls, it's not that hard to sew or glue a little pearl on there and you don't have to sew it on. I believe these are sewn on, yes, but you don't have to sew them on. You could just take a drop of glue, uh, but you can see where they're stitched on. And it really wouldn't be that hard, especially if you're going to do 10 or 20 at a time. Put the thread on your needle, come up, tie a knot, come up, put the pearl on, come down, tie a knot, tie a knot on the thread, go back to the next one. Or you could even leave a tail and just tie a knot on the back. If you didn't want to tie individual knots, you could just leave a piece of thread in the back, come through with your pearl, go back, pull it tight, and tie it in a knot. So, and you could do any kind of little tiny bead, but pearls tend to lend themselves to this. But that's another option you can do. But bows, you don't have to pay for bows. You do not have to pay for bows. Bows are something you can uh, make easily and inexpensively. 
and you can have a lot of fun with it because you can be more creative because you can use old vintage ribbons that you find like here's a real pretty piece of vintage ribbon and you could easily tie that into a bow as well now this would be for a bigger project but you can buy a lot of these pretty d designed uh, ribbons in small and see so you can make ribbons that you could or bows that you could not buy in the store and you just pick the side you like the best but they have to be with the print on both sides because if the prints only on one side what happens is when you pull it through one side will be blank one side will have the pattern now when you only have a short piece then is when you want to measure and possibly cut it in half if they're going to be big bows and then make one in each one on each uh, one of each you know what I mean but if you have a big spool then you can just do what I showed you you know tie and cut but if you have a limited amount of, of ribbon and you definitely want two out of it if it's long enough I would tie one hold it with your finger undo it like you can undo this and see, see that's slightly more than half so if you had to use half of it you'd have to make a slightly smaller bow so it's real easy and once you get the hang of it it's a lot of fun and you can really do a lot of fun things now another thing I wanted to show you was this this is an unusual bow because I used an unusual product for this bow if you are a thrift store estate sale shopper you will find this seam binding everywhere I paid a quarter each for these sometimes you'll get them two I think I got these actually half price two for a quarter and they're old I have one here I think it says 1980 something or what did it say 1973 and you can get these for a quarter 50 cents and they are I believe three yards depends yeah three yards on this one and this is the bow I made out of the orange and I made a yellow if you're lucky enough to buy black you could buy black now this when I showed you earlier this wasn't truly ribbon and that's why it has a weird fold here this was actually bias tape but if you don't like this little split you this would be a great place to glue another ribbon or to glue a piece of clothes chain something kind of accent wise over the the where it's folded but I just wanted to show you that there's so many things you can do to make bows you don't think out of the box you don't have to use traditional materials you can use binding tape and uh, bias tape and binding tape and whatever all these are called I don't know uh, seam binding and this is a real old one you can tell by the the packaging so um, I made a few colors up but I have these and the only ones I didn't have were black but I do have a white but you can make say I had 25 cents they were 39 cents new which I think is amusing but uh, 69 and how fun is it 73 to make something out of a vintage item that you can enjoy uh, see I got it like a Christmas green I got some reds I got a light uh, well dark actually this is kind of a fort that's a four screen a Kelly or emerald they call it emerald but I call that more of a Kelly or Christmas you got reds you got white and these are all old 73 yeah these are all 73 69 how fun to take something and this one looks like it might even be older how fun to take something that people consider no not worth anything I mean they sell them for I got these two for a quarter on half price I believe but let's say I paid a quarter each it's three yards and you know you can get a bunch of pretty bows out of it so even if you got I think I figured I get three six bows from one of these six bows for a quarter you can't beat that that's a really good deal so and, and they look cute with the lace I think it's just one other neat way to use something unexpected so when you're out looking for things to make bows out of think outside the box and look for this type of stuff because thrift stores and estate sales traditionally price these really cheap and 
sometimes you get a whole bag of it for a buck or something. So keep your eyes open for these lacy seam bindings and see what fun colors you can come up with because it's a cheap way to get six bows. I mean, you know, that's a nice size bow. You could use for pretty much anything except for your tiniest projects. And you get six bows for 50 cents or a quarter. Not too bad. And that's about the smallest I could figure out to make them, and they still look good. And I did a yellow. Did kind of autumn colors. I'm going to do some in all the different colors, though. So anyway, I just wanted to show you those. And I used to sell bows online, too, and that's another option if you have an Etsy store. Tie some bows. Take 50 cents worth of ribbon. Make 2 or $3 worth of bows. Because, yeah, I know it's time. Con but if you're just doing this while you're watching TV or talking on the phone when you wouldn't really do anything else productive, then you can make money when you're just relaxing. And I think that's a great way to make a few extra bucks. And if you don't want to sell them, make them and put them in a bag or a box. You can put them in the little individual bags or just throw them in a bag. And then the next time you want to craft, you've got yourself a big bag of all different size. And you can sort them by size, by color. And then you're good to go. But this is something you can definitely do while you're watching TV. Unless it's something you have to keep your eyeballs on. But if you're just kind of listening to something or you're talking on the phone, this is a great project. Anyway, I was getting ready to make a video for you where I needed a bow, and I thought it'd be fun to show you all the different types of ways you can make bows. So, I will be back soon. I hope you enjoyed this, and um, you can go out and either find some inexpensive ones at yard sales and thrift stores or learn to make your own and save yourself a lot of money the other thing you can also do is buy a lot of little scraps like I buy bags like this and it had this one that striped one I showed you a minute ago and it had this purple in it and I think I paid 50 cents or 25 cents for three good sized pieces of ribbon so this is the stuff to look for when you're at an estate sale, even if you if you do crafting, look for the little pieces of ribbon. Uh, they will come in handy for all kinds of projects, but especially for tying bows. And so what if you only get two or three odd bows? They're often fabrics like that striped one here that, you know, you might not find today because it's a vintage ribbon. And this is a nice, heavy, beautiful ribbon, so... And then that purple satin was in that bag too. Wasn't much of the satin enough to maybe make two bows. But say even if you got two, four, six bows for a quarter, 50 cents. And I know I didn't pay more than a quarter for this. Not too shabby, huh? So anyway, I just wanted to make a little video to show you this while I was already getting ready to do another video for you. I'm actually going to shoot about three videos today on different uh, crafting projects for you. So I hope you enjoy, and I hope this was of help to you. And I'll be back soon. Bye.